Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss about the fundamentals of bacterial growth and uh, kinetic parameter to measure the rate of bacterial growth. This topic is very important for competitive examination as well as in your university exam. So let's check why it is important and which portions are most important. There are two ways by which we can measure the growth of a living organism. The orderly increase in height or body weight of an individual is called growth and this definition is applicable only for larger organism because we can able to measure its body weight as well as its height using available instruments but for smaller organism this definition is not applicable it is tough when the increase in height or body weight is negligible and no instruments are available to detect it and it is also very tedious job for smaller organism our approach will be different the increase in number over a certain period of time is called growth. Here, you don't have to measure its body weight or height. You have to count only the initial and final number of individuals. And in this way, we generally determine the growth of a city, tiger population or number of plants in a forest. We know that bacteria are also tiny and microscopic. And during growth, the changes in size or weight of a single microbe is negligible. Such small changes are very difficult to measure and on the other hand various direct and indirect methods are available by which we can easily count the number of bacteria present in a population. So when we use the term bacterial growth that actually indicates the increase in number only. When the bacterial population is increasing that means bacteria are also growing. Now the question is microbial growth has any biological significance or not? Of course yes. Suppose you want to know the status of a bacterial infection. You just measure the number of microbes present in or on the infected area and after a few days measure the number again. You will understand whether the infection is progressing or healing. Or you want to know the efficacy of an antibiotic. Again you have to count the number before and after the drug treatment. If the number is decreased that means the drug is effective against the bacteria. Or you want to isolate a fermentation product like two bacterial species can able to synthesize same amino acid leucine. But the second one grow faster. Then which bacteria will you choose? Definitely you will choose the fast growing bacteria because they will produce more amount of final product quickly. And now let's check how they actually grow. When the environmental conditions are favorable for microbial growth, bacteria start macromolecule synthesis rapidly. And as a result, the size of the bacterium is also increasing. During growth, the parent cell enlarges, duplicates its chromosome and forms a central transverse septum in this area that divides the cell into two daughter cells. That's why this type of cell division is called transverse fission. The growth is called balanced growth because the amount of the most of the cellular constituents increase proportionally like the ribosome, flagella, enzymes, genetic material, etc. And the cell is called the mother or parent cell and these two cells are called daughter cells. Why daughter cells? Why they are also female? Because after a few minutes, the two daughter cells will grow and repeat this cycle again. So at the end of each generation, two daughter cells are produced from one mother cell. And for this reason, this type of reproduction is also called binary fission. Binary means two. From one, two cells appeared. In this way, the bacterial number increases exponentially. That's why this growth is called exponential growth. When we talk about kinetics like enzyme kinetics, microbial death kinetics or growth kinetics, our aim is always same, to find out the rate or simply how fast or slow it is. For this, what you have to do? You have to calculate how many events occur per unit time. And here event means number of generation or simply we can say that how many times bacteria have divided. Here again the problem is the task is very difficult. For this you have to observe a bacteria under a microscope all day long and it is not possible. Let's try to find out some easy way. Suppose here the bacterial number is 1 and after 20 minutes it becomes 2. Means only one generation is completed. In this way if the final bacterial number is 16 that means four generations have completed or we can say that after time t if the bacteria completed n number of generation then the final bacterial number will be 2 to the power n but if we start with 10 cells 
it will be 20, then 40, and then 80. Or we can say that it is 10 times higher than the previous one. Or simply, we can say that the final number of bacteria will be N0 into 2 to the power N. If we know the final and initial bacterial number, we can easily calculate the number of generation completed using these relationship. Before moving to the next step, let's solve one numerical problem. In an artificial liquid medium, initial number of E. coli cell was 100. What will be the final number of E. coli cells after 200 minutes? We know that E. coli take 20 minutes to complete one generation. So within 200 minutes, it will complete 10 generation. The initial cell number N0 is provided here, that is 100. To determine the final bacterial load, we will use this equation. So after 200 minutes, final bacterial load will be 10 to the power 4. Our second task is to simplify this equation and I will rewrite the equation in this way after putting log on both sides of this equation. Log 2 to the power n means n log 2 and log 2 is 0 0.301. And finally, we have derived an equation to calculate the number of generation using initial and final number of bacterial cells. Using this equation, we can easily calculate the number of generation. Let's solve another numerical problem. A food was accidentally contaminated with E. coli cells. Initially, the number was 10 to the power 2 cells and after 10 hours, the number reached to 10 to the power 6 cells. Then how many generations have completed within that period? Imagine the food provide an ideal conditions for bacterial growth. Here, two informations are provided. Initial bacterial load or N0 that is 10 to the power 2 cells and final bacterial load NT that is 10 to the power 6 cells. Time T is also provided. But we will use this equation to solve the problem and uh, for this equation we don't require time. So number of generation n is log nt that is 10 to the power 6 that means 6 log 10 minus log n0 or log 10 to the power 2 or 2 log 10. Log 10 is equals to 1 or 6 minus 2 that means 4. So finally n is 13.28 that means 13th generation has completed and they are preparing for number 14th generation. So answer will be 13. We are at the end step. We have already derived a relationship from where we can calculate the number of generation. If we know the NT and N0. But from the value of N, we can't able to determine the growth rate. But if we can able to find out how many generations completed per unit time, it will reflect the speed or growth rate. Let me simplify this. Suppose bacteria A have completed two generations and another bacteria B have completed three generations. Then which one is growing faster? We can't able to determine this. We need how much time taken by both organism to complete two and three generations respectively. Suppose both organism are allowed to grow for one hour. Now we can calculate the growth rate, right? You can check the final number of bacteria B and A after one hour from this table if the initial bacterial load for both cases are same. Here, in the third step, we will just put time t on both sides of this equation. I hope now you can understand if n by t is large, the bacteria will grow faster and if n by t is small, the bacteria will grow slowly. So our task is finished. We will measure the final bacterial load, initial bacterial load and time t and we can easily calculate the bacterial growth. Here, if t is 1 hour, the value of n by t is called mean growth rate constant. It is designated as small k and unit is generation per hour. So, we can rewrite this in this way. It is very important parameter to express growth rate of a particular microbe. So, step by step, we have derived a rate equation in which all the parameters used in the right side are measurable. Let us solve another numerical problem. A bacterial culture contains 10 to the power 3 cells per ml initially and reached 10 to the power 9 cells per ml after 10 hours. Then you have to calculate the mean growth rate constant of that microbe. We will use this equation to solve the problem. Here initial bacterial load 10 to the power 3 cells per ml or 3 log 10 and final bacterial load 10 to the power 9 cells per ml or 9 log 10 and time t is 10 hours or 9 minus 3 that is 6 or 6 by 10 means 1.99 or roughly two generations will be completed per hour. Another way by which we can also calculate the rate or speed of bacterial growth. It is called the generation time or the doubling time 
or mean generation time. It is the time required to complete one generation only. That means the final bacterial number will be exactly double compared to the initial number. It is designated as small g and unit is minute. Come back to this table. Here organism A, two generations have completed in one hour or 60 minutes. Then one generation will be completed in 60 by 2 that is 30 minutes. So the generation time for organism A is 30 minutes. So you can calculate G using these relationship when N and T are known. Do you notice that K is N by T and here G is T by N or we can say that G is 1 by K. So for G we can also rewrite this equation in this way. Now it's time to solve another numerical problem. A bacterial culture contained 10 to the power 3 cells per ml initially and reached 10 to the power 9 cells per ml after 10 hours. Then you have to calculate the generation time. Here initial and final bacterial number are provided. So we will use the equation to calculate G. Here initial bacterial load N0 is 10 to the power 3 cells per ml or 3 log 10 and final bacterial number NT is 10 to the power 9 cells per ml or N log 10 and time T is 10 hours. We have to convert it into minute or it is 600 minute. Now G is 30.1 minute. That means bacteria will divide after every 30.1 minute. So depending on the data provided to you, you have to choose which equation you will use to calculate the value of G. The generation time, also known as the doubling time, it's a critical parameter in microbiology and has several medical significances. Bacterial population with shorter generation time are more susceptible to antibiotics that target rapidly dividing cells. Longer generation times may require longer treatment periods to completely eradicate the bacterial population. A shorter generation time indicates a rapid bacterial growth and spread more quickly. A bacterial population with shorter generation time can acquire antibiotic resistance mutation more quickly through genetic mutations and selection. In pharmaceutical industry and biotechnology, knowledge of microbial generation time is essential for optimizing fermentation process to produce drugs, vaccine and other bioproducts. If we mix two bacteria, slow growing and fast growing in a solid medium, next day you will observe the colony of fast growing bacteria only because they outnumber the slow growers. Generation time depends on several internal and external factors like age of the bacterial culture. That means if the culture is old, it will take more time to divide. For example, you can see in this table, fresh culture of E. coli will divide after every 20 minutes. But for old culture, it may extend. Generation time also depends on availability of nutrients. If nutrients are limited, generation time will be extended than normal. Temperature and humidity are most important external factors. If not favorable for growth, generation time will be longer than normal. The generation time is species specific. For example, the generation time of three microorganisms are listed in this table. You can check that G is not same for all organisms. Some organisms divide faster while some divide very slowly. So that's all for now. If you like this video, press the like button and share with your friends and subscribe my channel if you are watching my videos for the first time. And thanks for watching.